Consider it pure joy when you face trials. We might as well be told to dribble a football, right? Or is it possible to have joy in the midst of the most difficult situations? This is Looking Intently, and I just started a new series through the book of James. I'm really excited about it because this is an awesome and really helpful book. To make sure you're notified when each of the new videos comes out, here in the lower right you'll see a subscribe button. Click on that, and then when that bell icon appears, click that as well. If you missed the first video, you can click on this tag in the upper right, and it'll take you right to that. I said in the last video, I always encourage people to leave comments. That's really helpful. But I got to thinking this whole first section is about facing difficult times. And if you're going through something and you would like prayer, you don't have to leave any details, but just put in the comment section, just put please pray, and I promise I will pray for you. Well, James chapter 1, verse 2, he writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And many kinds means just that. It can be a difficult situation. It can be some personal issue. It can be a temptation that we're facing, some you know, way that Satan is attacking. Whatever it is, it's included here. And that just makes it even more difficult to, to grasp how in the world do I consider it pure joy when those things happen? Well, the problem is we think we're being told to do something we're not being told to do. Matter of fact, we can't do. We think we're being told to have an emotional response, immediate automatic reaction to trials, and we think we're being told, enjoy it. That's the feeling we're supposed to have. But that's not what considerate pure joy means. We're going to see as we go through, especially this first section, but some, some other passages as well in James. You, you almost need to have the dictionary of James because we've come to use some words in different ways than he was using them and even some translation issues, and we'll talk about those as they come up. The first word, of course, to, to look at and define according to James' use and really the Bible's use is this word joy. And the problem is it sounds in English like our word enjoy. And we think, well, that's what we're being told to do. But they're actually two totally different words in the original languages. You know, when the Bible talks about enjoy, it uses that in a passage like Romans 15, 24, where Paul writes to the church in Rome, he says, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain and to be helped on my journey there by you once I have enjoyed your company for a while. He's saying, I, I want to see you, sit around, talk with you, and he knows I'll enjoy that. It'll be pleasant. And that's what enjoyment is. It's this natural response to a pleasant situation. Joy, on the other hand, is different. Joy adds an element. Joy goes deeper. Joy is an attitude. Which the key difference between that and a feeling, I can choose to have an attitude. I can't choose what to feel. I can choose to have an attitude. And now it still has that positive connotation. Matthew chapter 13, Jesus, Jesus talks about, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. You know, man, that was a great experience. He was thrilled. So joy has that positive connotation. But because it's an attitude, we can have it not only when things are going well, also when things are going difficult. That's why Jesus says in John 16 to the apostles, he says, So also you have sorrow now at the thought of him leaving, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. Well, think about the things they're going to face. You know, they're going to rejoice when they see him again, when he rises from the dead, but then he's going to leave, and they are going to face difficulty after difficulty. Most of them are going to be put to death for their faith, but Jesus says, it doesn't matter. No one, nothing will be able to take that joy from you because it's an attitude we can choose to have. And that's the other word, uh, the word consider, or some translations count it pure joy. It's not saying it's just going to happen. We have to make a determined decision to consider it, to consider and determine I'm going to face this situation with this attitude of joy. That's really what it's talking about. James is saying make a determined decision to face a trial with an attitude of joy. And also, he's saying here, have that joy before you see how things are going to turn out. You know, We're going to see what's going to come about from this, the blessings that are going to come. But James is saying you have that now before those things happen in the midst of the trial because you trust God. Have that joy. Well, ask yourself, do I want to have joy amidst trials? And I think most of us will say, well, of course. You know, if I got to face them anyway, I'd like to have joy. 
Uh, I would say if you're not facing a trial with joy, then the answer really isn't, of course, because we can. It's possible. Every one of us can choose to face a trial with an attitude of joy. Now, it's not easy at all, and we're going to see more about how to do it. And I guess the real takeaway from this video is just realize it is possible. James isn't asking us to do something impossible because he's not asking or telling us to feel a certain way. He's saying to face that trial with an attitude of joy. That's possible. That's real. It's something I can expect to do. It's something I can do. So we're going to look more about how to do that. In the meantime, read the good book like a good book.